I'm John Cruth. I'm the executive director of the Ryan Center, and I want to thank you guys for coming out and braving the heat to come here to see Ed Edwards tonight. Um, I'm really excited to see this presentation. We did a little bit of uh, experiments with Ed in the, in the lab today and uh, had some really fun experiences, had some good results. Um, so tonight, uh, I want to let you guys know I have some official things to take care of. First of all, turn off your cell phones. Good evening. Welcome tonight to tonight's program. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our special guest speaker, Mr. Ed Edwards. Ed grew up in Georgia and spent his childhood experimenting with an awareness of an energy field that he could sense and modulate. In 1995, at Helanda Biophysical Laboratory in Grass Lake, Michigan, Dr. William Levingood was the first scientist to quantitate, quantitative, uh, Yes, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> measure Ed's capability to transfer energy beyond space and time. In 2008, Ed was tested at the Rhine Research Center where he was able to increase the light level, or photons, by 210 times above the amount of normal background photons. Ed has an ongoing project with the Rhine Research Center in the Bioenergy Emissions Lab. Ed has trained his uh, autonomic nervous system to interact with ever-shifting ever isomeric configurations called assonant energy that are ubiquitous in all living organisms. By attuning to this resonant energy with a patient, he shifts the frequencies of their energy in a way that gives maximum benefit for healing. This evening, you will have the opportunity to experience energetic resonance for yourself. Please know, Mr. Edwards does not diagnose or treat diseases. As an aside, I would like to add that last year, I had an energy attunement with Mr. Edwards which has resulted in an improvement in a long-standing health issue that I'd been dealing with, thyroid nodules, and I had had that um, followed for 10 years uh, with ultrasounds and blood work, and I went back after uh, a session with Mr. Edwards, and I no longer needed a biopsy, or um, my neck size went down and was very good. Um, so please join me in welcoming our guest, Mr. Ed Edwards. Uh, hello, everyone. Good to see everybody again. Uh, a few of you I remember from the last time I was up here, and a lot of new faces. And so I'm back again. I'm a little bit of a hot time today. But um, as I said, I started out with this energy when I was a little baby. Uh, my grandmother was a hands-on healer in our community. I was like a problem birth, so she did this energy on me a lot when I was first born. I can remember when I was about six months old, able to mimic the energy and play back with my grandmother doing it. Remember the old patty cake game and stuff? Well, instead of us doing like that, every time my hands would get close, they'd get real hot, tingly, and I could push with it. Well, I came up through life um, doing all kinds of weird stuff, being that I was in the country. It's a good thing I was in the country. If they'd have found out about me in the city, no telling where I'd be stuck at now. <laughs> you know, so anyhow, so I grew up uh, in the country playing with this, didn't know what it was, didn't know how to explain it, uh, always wanting to find answers to it, uh, but never could. Where I'm from, uh, I'm in that little town they filmed the movie Deliverance in, so there ain't many people that you can ask about energy healing there. <laughs> you know? So I had to keep it quiet all my life around there. Then finally back in uh, about 1994, I got hooked up with uh, Dr. Levingood here. He uh, was a physics professor up at the University of Michigan, and I found him because Dan Rather was doing a story on him, had him on 2020. And he's got this equipment here called the Charge Density Pulse Recorder that will measure this energy. And he uses it to measure pain and quite a few other things with breakdowns of tissue and all. 
We also hook people to it that are sick, and then get a baseline and find out you know, where they're at and stuff, and I'll lock a hold of the people, even from a distance, and we can watch the graphs of their energy go up as I start doing this energy on them. It basically realigns all the electrical systems within their bodies, and the way I explain it is like people with your cells are you know, like an energizer battery. If you're sick, all these batteries are all twisted out of shape. When I apply this energy to you, it just realigns everything so your natural systems all start working again properly. Well, y'all ready to feel this energy? All right, so I'd rather just go ahead and show it to people and then talk about it, you know? So if everybody kind of loosen up a little bit, get your feet on the floor. And we've got a couple of ways of doing this. We can uh, do it sitting down to start out, but I've got this fun trick that I call a gravity wave effect where if I get you to stand up, and if I get my cameraman maybe to shoot down the row of a couple of people there when we do the standing, I'm going to push and pull y'all all at the same time. Okay? So if everybody would start out holding their hands like this right here, and move them back and forth just a little, and you'll feel a tingle heat magnetic sensation right in there. Feel that? Everybody, I'm going to let give a chance for I see and everybody gets locked into it good. You got it up there? All right. Pull it on apart a little bit. Now then, I'm going to send a little juice through it to see if I can't wiggle your fingers. Let your fingers relax for me on your end. You ready? There. Feel the wigglies? Basically, we got the, what's known as the quantum universe between us. I'm energetically locking into it, and I'm interacting with your autonomic nervous system. All right, turn your hands up like this. All right, now I'm going to radiate some energy, and do a, it'll kind of like nearly pull on your arms. Feel that levitating effect? All right. Now pull them back here and let's see if the magnets are a little bit stronger. If it is, that means you've gotten more aware to your own electrical systems. Y'all feel that stronger now? Okay. Let's go ahead and try the gravity wave. If y'all could stand up for me. Now be cautious so that you don't fall over. Okay. Let me get back over here a little bit. Do your hands like this first. Just a little bit to lock in where you get the magnetic sensations. Got that? Now pull your hands down like this and beware of your balance. Here we go. Here is a DC negative field. Feel the pull? Okay, neutral. Now I'm going DC positive. You okay? That's a DC positive field. Basically, I'm turning my body into a giant electromagnet, and I'm interacting with y'all. That's DC positive. Now back to DC negative. Anybody not getting the pull? You not getting the pull? Hang on. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to turn it up. Getting that pull now? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll back it down a little bit. Now, if any of you got any aches and pains, you may notice them start to tingle and getting warm. One of, the, one of the byproducts or side products of this is that it heals. It makes pain go away. So I'm just pushing back and forth, playing with energy, and the side product is uh, y'all getting some pain relief up there. Anybody got any aches and pains still? All right, what you got up there, sir? Lower back. Lower back. Your and your shoulder. I'm going to turn it up a little more. Uh, taking some of the stiffness out. Feel better. How's the shoulders, ma'am?
Pain low it going down? All right, I'm going to just make everybody tingle here right quick. Good. And this will help with the pain. Y'all tingling up yonder? Your feet may get hot too. All right, any pains left anywhere? I want to make sure everybody's smiling so we can continue here. Ankles, I got a different trick for ankles. Why don't you come right down here? I'll demonstrate how we do a few things here. And I'll let you, you can tell them, where's your microphone at there? That you had, the other one. Oh. If you hold that, you can give them a little feedback what you feel. Sit down in the chair for me. Put both feet up like that. There. Feel that coming through your shoes? Mm hmm I do. Both ankles? Both ankles. What does that feel like? It feels like a foot massage. <laughs> I'm not touching you, though. I know. What I do, Dr. Levingood's learned with his equipment that the energy comes out my left hand. He calls it charged density plasma. I send it through whatever I'm working on and back to my right hand. I have to cycle it. Whether I'm working on one person or with all of you, I run a signal out that went through every one of you and then back to me. But when I work concentrated on one person, and I just send it directly through them, but y'all may feel something. Y'all go ahead and sit back down up there. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Everybody kick your ankles out like that. Now, while I'm working on her, see how many feel it up there. So that's what this energy is. It's connected. We've got this big pattern of connectivity here. You just relax. All right, any of y'all feel anything in your feet? This will make you feel and sleep real good tonight. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> oh, okay. This works real good on taking swelling, arthritis, mm -hmm. and them kind of problems out. <clears throat> and even with children, babies cutting teeth, I'm able to make the pain go away from it where they're not so cranky. Mm. What? When the permanent, if, uh, if I get it just right, permanent. Oh, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people I've worked on 10, 15 years ago with bursitis, arthritis, and they've never had a problem with it since. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and it's not, not every time. People do re-hurt things. People will restrain them, and then they'll come back and see me, and I'll interact with them again for a little bit. Mm. How's that feeling? That feels so good. Mm-hmm. It is just like a foot massage without you touching it. Yeah. Oh, I'm, that feels so good. I'm vibrating the energy. I'm resonating the energy and vibrating it. I'm doing this in my mind. I'm just using my hands as tools. And I can talk and chew gum at the same time. <laughs> and it feels very warm, especially uh -huh. on my toes. I would tell you my toes feel warmer. Mm -hmm. I'm sweating up here, and I'm always cold. Yeah. It cranks your circulation up like crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. You are welcome. What's your phone number? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. dorn has got it up there. Okay, anyone else like to try something? Yes. You're back, okay. Come right on up here. Anytime, if any of y'all are learning this, you build the energy up once you learn about it. If you're back there, you place a person right there. Okay. 
So I try to teach people this. You know, everybody's got a brain up here. It controls magnetic fields. Just start doing it. The best way to start doing it is just experience it a little bit and then play with it. Feel that going in there? I, I feel a strange, um, just, a, I would say, like a wave, mm -hmm. a light wave. It's, it's a light not, wave. It's not really tingling, but it's almost a, a, like a, a wave of air. Mm-hmm. And it's increasing now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and crank it up. Okay, you're going to get warm. <laughs> That's okay. I don't want to fart now. <laughs> All right. Don't worry. Not in close proximity. All right, we ain't doing that. All right. I don't think everybody knows that joke yet. Oh, we were talking about that earlier. He'll, he'll fit in on that. Yeah, I used to have a, a mis very mischievous side to me when I was a kid. And when you got a toy like this, you can do things and get away with it. Anyhow, but, well, I'll give that story as we go here, maybe. But anyhow, as a kid learning this stuff, my grand grandmother did it to me all the time, but she read scripture every time she did it. Okay? But as a baby, I didn't know what those words meant, but yet I could feel the energy and all. So as I was growing up, I had to go to church every time the doors opened. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and every Bible school that came to town. It drove me up the wall. So by the time I was 14, our church had two stories, the youth set upstairs in the balcony and the older people down below. And me being the mischievous kid I was and the kind of friends I had down there in the country, they always put me up to stuff. So I would look down there, we'd pick somebody out, hey, her, okay. I'd lock in on them, I'd do like this, and when I'd do this, they'd fart. <laughs> One time I did it, eight of them farted at once down there. <laughs> Two of them had to get up and leave the church. <laughs> Somebody told the preacher I did that. <laughs> what, that me? Didn't burn a cross in your yard. <laughs> oh, they about did. <laughs> no, they had a little talk with me. You can't do that bad. You just can't do that here. <laughs> no. Yes? Cure the pain, cure the cause that causes the pain. For instance, I have a, a lower lumbar that's out, out of alignment, I guess, on my own, all my life. Mm-hmm. Maybe a quarter of an inch or so. Mm-hmm. And it causes a lot of pain. Uh-huh. You can take the pain away, but then if the bone doesn't move back in place, why don't you just come back? Come down here and let's try something. Okay, how's that feel? Yeah. Come on down. I can't stand it with people in pain. Work on her left shoulder. Okay. Will do. Anyhow, like I say, I've had a wild life in this energy. Let's sit down over here. Wait, where is it at in your... It's, I don't know which one it is. Okay, then just sit down. Let's not worry about which one it is. <laughs> Put your feet out there. All right, feel that? It takes just a second to get locked in. All right, you're back warming now. Uh-huh. Hold your hands like that and that'll help pull the circuit right up through you. All right, lock them in. And neat thing, I can go right through the chair with it. All right, how's the back feeling there? You feel that? Mm -hmm. Warming up in there? Yeah, yeah. Just a little bit more. All right, now do me a favor. Get up and walk over yonder and back to me. Feeling better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now sit back down and hold the energy and play with it a little bit while we're finishing up here. And uh, that should lock it out good. And your shirt is holding? You're hurting? 
I can't have you hurt. Come here. Come on down. Or just I'll come up there. Here. You come on down? Okay. All righty. Okay, be okay. Where you want me? I'll sit down in the chair up here. All right. Let's see if we can't run a little electricity through your shoulders here. Right. So are they hurting right through here? Yeah, all the way up. All the way up? Okay. You just relax. What I always try to do is like heat the body. Basically, I'm vibrating at such a rate right here. The heating effect seems to make the pain just go right away. All right, is that warming up a little? The pain easing off a little bit? Yeah, I want to get everybody where they're not in pain. We can talk a little bit better here when nobody's hurting, right? Thank you. All right, let me get it through your feet just a little bit. Send it up through there. You must be feeling better. She's smiling. go up here and sit down and just relax right. and keep smiling <laughs> Thank you know? you. okay okay well Bill would you like to talk any about what we did today for a minute okay. and then we'll uh, kind of go on a little bit better and description about what this is all about here um. Yeah, John Cruth mentioned this before that we tested Ed. The way in which we tested him was to measure light emission from the body. We don't know what this does. Maybe that's how he does his healing. But uh, it's in the blue invisible range of the spectrum. That's where our photomultiplier tube works. And so we have people in a dark room and we have a very sensitive photomultiplier and you can count photons. A photon is the smallest unit of light, and so it depends on the frequency, so the photons <coughs> in the blue UV range are what we're counting, actually, because one photon goes into the sensitive detector, dislodges another electron, an electron from the sensitive surface, that dislodges still another, and it keeps multiplying as it goes down the line. So you end up getting an appreciable current that you can measure for just one photon of light. So you can e easily distinguish between five photons or six photons. So a person in the dark room, the normal level is between about five and 10. And so we have tested people in meditation where they're, they meditate on healing and the level might go up to uh, 40 or 50 or 60. That's the best we've gotten in recent years. Tell them to stop meditating and it plunges back down to the original level. Well, with Ed, I tested him in um, last November and we got levels of uh, 2,000 or more. So it's 210 more than normal baseline. Tested him again today and we got even better than that. So uh, it, it's still working, whatever it is. It's, my energy is definitely increasing. I don't know what's really going on here, but I've known about something ever since I was a kid, and it's starting to really come in, into focus now. I got to interact with some other scientists around 1998 that allowed me to transmit this energy and then record it at various locations on the planet all at the same time. 
and we've got to do some really interesting things. But even then, they kept seeing through the years I'd worked with them an increase in the energy. So it's continually going up here. For what purpose, I don't know. I do know that it's increasing like crazy. I'm having a lot of fun learning about it, and I'm having a lot of fun going around healing and helping people with it and everything, but I still feel like there's even a higher purpose than that right now. Uh, yes, ma'am? Um, I have problems with cash registers, uh, Walmart. Uh, we had a few problems when I walk in ICU at Emory. Um, in the early days with computers, when they first came out, I used to just keep wiping my hard drives out. And I found out when I got, nowadays it don't bother them so bad, but the Windows 95 and the old, when they first came out, if I got both hands up by my computer, I, it blew holes in the hard drive. I mean, I spent, huh? You wear a watch. I don't. No. Mm -hmm. Do you feel where that is? Yes, I get a sense. I get like a ghost imagery uh, back in my body or sometimes, like if I'm doing long range healing on people, I create the image of a mannequin in my mind and then this represents whoever, whatever I'm working on. And then through that, I get a feedback signal into myself. That's when I'm long range with people. And if I've got somebody just up in front of me, I can get ghost impressions of them in my body. I don't always, not always accurate. I don't try to focus on it because I try to bring the energy in to where it's going to work universally throughout the whole body. You know, so it may be hurting in your shoulders, but you may also have a problem back here in your knee that you don't even know about. But this energy knows. It'll get there and work on it all. Right here is Dr. Levingood kind of explaining that. Oh, I can't have my mic up there. But when I turn it off, I get a flat baseline with it. Basically, I just pull the energy back in. Mentally, mentally I just shut down. I, I just try to calm down to nothing. But when I want to activate it, the brain controls the magnetic field. So I take from baseline, I go... Just like that, it's like an electromagnetic pulse. And when I start vibrating it, then it starts connecting with all the other energy. And how do you consciously go into a vibration like you know that resonant to me? I'm, oh yeah, I'm not familiar with it. I just it's just as easy as walking for me. I can Dr. Levengood that started out, he studied, worked with the Dalai Lama, with uh, Tibetan monks, yoga, Reiki masters. He's had them all tested on the equipment. Everybody else has to meditate to start bringing this stuff up. Me, I get a hold of the thing and it goes 800,000 microamps just like that and I'm able to bounce it back and forth. Like when I did the gravity waves with you, I learned how to do that on the equipment, being able to hold it straight DC negative or straight DC positive above baseline. And I was able to watch my brain on that equipment right there. And being there and getting that instant feedback is when I started learning how, because I noticed in the lab once I'd flatline it and then hold it down to one side or the other, Dr. Levengood would start leaning one way or he'd start <laughs> leaning the other way. You know, and different people in there. So once I start focusing on it, I can make them wobble all around. And yes? Does that work on other things besides pain, like asthma? Uh-huh. Works real good on asthma. Right, where was that lady that introdu introduced me? Bonnie. Bonnie, how did it do on your asthma? Oh, yeah, that, that group, too. I had a test before and after mm -hmm. the asthma. Yeah. And the doctor, she goes, she goes, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. The testing that you did in November and then again today, the visible spectrum, do you see anything? At times, I do. Every now and then I can see a little blue plasma glow, especially going between my fingers. 
if I hold my hands, and today I was doing some of that build, it was like this right here, and uh, you know, I was telling you I was uh, building it up, and it was about that time when you got the spikes in there. But at times, I can do it. Now, a lot of times, this is interesting. If I got children around and I'm working, doing healing energies on adults, I've, a lot of times I've had the children, Mommy, there's light coming out of that man. <laughs> they can see it. Children can see these things. And I'll... Have you ever spontaneously A couple rednecks. <laughs> Yeah, they just messing with me the wrong way. I didn't really catch them on fire. They kind of discharged some bodily functions all over themselves. <laughs> you know, a little stronger than a fart. Huh? Uh huh. I've never done that, but I've done lightning boat demonstrations where if I have a thunderhead, in fact, I've got a video there where I did it for a moonshine bootlegger, snake handling Baptist preacher, and two sheriff deputies. <laughs> None of them mess with me down there anymore. <laughs> but if I've got a thunderhead, like when I did the gravity wave with you, if I've got a thunderhead up here already, I can look, I'm, I live in the mountains, so I look over at the next mountain or ridge over, and we'll focus on a tree or a rocky area, and then I'll focus like I'm doing the gravity wave on you, except into that one spot. And they theorize that I reionize the air right there. So I give the lightning a place to get attracted to. And it worked good enough for the moonshine bootlegger. The, you know, so uh, it's just a matter of focusing the energy. And you can run it way out there. You know. But as for catching things on fire, I haven't tried that. But I have got a buddy that's chief of police, and he walked in my shop one day with his bulletproof vest on, and he said he was hurt, and I electrified him. He couldn't get out of it quick enough. <laughs> and I was across the counter. You know? Yeah. Pardon? Can I, I didn't understand that. Not to my level. I find people that can do things. I believe I can teach them to come up to my level, maybe, but I haven't found anybody. I don't think they just were ever as mischievous as I was. I think that played a little helping in my development and everything, because I wasn't scared of this energy growing up. Not a bit. And I had a lot of friends, and they called me, nicknamed me Radioactive and Electric Eddie and a few other things. Yes, sir. No, but I can create an effect that makes you feel like you're levitating. Lock in like that for a second. Or everybody go ahead and lock in. I'll give you a little levitationing effect here. This will make you feel light, basically. You ready? You got locked in? Everybody should have got it real quick this time. Feel the magnet? All right, y'all just hold that right there. Feel yourself getting lighter? Now, if everybody does start floating off, you get this on film good. Feel the weight coming off of you? Now, I'm going to let go of it and let you sit back down quick. To come back down? Now, I can't literally physically get you up, but um, I can create the sensations as though you were. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I can make those needles on that machine go nuts <laughs> just by looking at it. Yes? Can you get mad when, when you were growing up and you got mad at things where things start breaking out of the house? Because I have that. I've never, I, I can't do all the things you're doing, but when I'm mad yeah. at work, it's yeah, things would happen. Yeah, I've had things happen. And uh, I learned not to get mad. I try not to get mad at all. You know, I try to keep a happy outlook on everything. I try to help everybody out that comes along. I don't get mad at nobody unless they give me a good reason. And if they do, I'll run them out of town. Okay? Yes? That 
machine ain't receptive and ain't got a conscious and I can knock it all over for a loop. No. Consciousness, they don't have to be receptive. I can make people that's even unconscious that are hurting wake up not hurting. You have an effect on animals? Yes, big time. It works just as good on old dogs as it does on old human dogs. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I have people have dogs that they've had 14, 15 years. It's got arthritis and stuff, and dogs just come up and like beg for it, and they'll just start grinning and go over and lay down. And they come up, and I'll run my hands up and down them a couple of times. I've had deer come up to me. I've had bear come up to me. Now, this is because I live deep in the country. And I'll just sit there and meditate, and they'll come up and just be right there at peace with me. Where's he at? The Chapel Hill. Where's that Chapel Hill? That's near here. Uh -huh. But I mean, what I like, she asked if you've met any other people like you. Are you the only person that you know people have to go to Georgia to, to be treated by you? Or? Pick up a telephone. I can do you over the phone. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. <laughs> I can affect that equipment right there from standing right here. And it's so up in Michigan. Phone <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> all right. I'll leave you my business number. Yeah, uh, I help people all the time, all over the world. They call me up if they're hurting, and I've had people get burned with grease or something, cooking, be headed to the emergency room. And I'm sitting on, like for example, I operate heavy equipment some. I was sitting on a track hoe digging out a boathouse down on Lake Raven one day. My phone rung, and a friend of mine was headed to the hospital, been burnt. I locked on to them before they got to the emergency room. That all the pain left them. And uh, two weeks later, where they had gotten burnt real bad, it just scabbed over, fell off, and no scar. And there's one burn about the size of this up on them. That's just one little example. I get people all types of pain, and all I've got to do is get them to hear me on a speakerphone or headset, get them to hold their hands about like this, and once they feel that magnetic tingle, it's already working on them. But you really can't train other people to do this. It has to be something you're really like I believe everybody can do it. There's nothing different about me other than I've just played with this energy all my life. Now, I think that everybody could learn how to do a good portion of what I do. I've just sat out on a stump out in the woods, had plenty of time, and played with things, and played with lightning bolts, and got struck by lightning bolts a few times, and things like that. Yes? I have a friend who's been hit by lightning three times. I've been four. <laughs> when a lightning storm comes about now, he goes into a closet and just sits there and <laughs> When a lightning storm comes up, I go out, get my buddies around, and we start hitting spots to hit. Direct, I don't think he learned to direct it. No. Yeah. I mean, I don't get scared of it. I've been Even every time I've been hit, I'll still step right out there again. I've been hit in an aluminum John boat in the middle of the lake one time. Uh, another time I was on a communications tower putting a microwave dish up. I was about 600 feet off the ground. Thunderstorm 15 miles away. Straight line, boat of lightning. Come straight to that tower I was on, nailed it. Now, another time I was on an aluminum ladder wiring in floodlights on another cabin on the same lake that I got struck on. Does that sort of supercharge you? Oh God, water? yeah. I tingle like crazy for days. <laughs> I'm a blast to be around then. <laughs> yeah. How about your grandmother? Um, she knew how to do this. You know? Yes, but people, my grandparents started a historical photo shop in my little town. My grandfather was a photographer. I'm a photographer and I took over the shop. Uh, my grandmother did the hand healing and I think I'm affecting the mic, ain't I? Yeah. So, uh, I would be as people would come along, they would work either doing photography or they'd come in and she would do healings on them. And so I was exposed to that growing up. I drained the bass when I can't wear watches. You got any more batteries?
This happened to me in Atlanta when I did that lecture down there at the center stage a few months back. Took out everything after a minute, a few minutes. I don't know, batteries are going in and out on it. Well, we'll keep going on. Yes, ma'am? Did you get physically drained from using no. it? No. no, none at all. So do, is it is it's feeding you as it's so feeding It's feeding me as, every time I do a healing on somebody, I'm pumped up ready to do 10 more. No, I'm just, the more I do it, it just cranks me on up. When I get done here tonight, I gotta go out and get really wild. And I'll have so much energy. How much yeah. sleep do you get in Five to six hours. I get more than five. If I get more than six hours, I don't, I don't feel right. this line. Okay. Give me that. I will try this. I'm not used. Yes. Yeah, I'll do. I'm gonna be here tomorrow, uh, and I probably won't leave until Sunday. I like to drive at night time, so I'll either leave late tomorrow night or I'll leave Sunday night. I'm hanging out at Ben's house over here, and uh, they have my number. I can leave a number at y'all if y'all want to get up with me tomorrow. Or, Bill, can I be around? Were we going to work over at the Ryan Center tomorrow? No, don't, think so. don't think so? Okay. Um, we'll find a place. I'll be around here somewhere. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. To an extent, yeah. Hold your hands. That's all back with this locking in with the energy and the magnetics. That's what you always start out with to, uh, to working on yourself is create this ball of energy, get it going, and if you got a knee, you can just apply it like that. She's got a knee. You got I a got bad knee? Knees. Yeah, I got two bad knees. All right. I'm going to amp it up for you one time, and you Keep it going. Feel that in your knee? I feel it in my hands. You feel it in your hands. Okay, keep it going in your hands. Now I'm going to turn mine off and you keep it going. Okay, I'm off. You got it going still? Okay, you're doing that. Feel the energy going into your knee? That's the idea is to keep it moving around like that for a few minutes. You sure can. How's yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure can. Yes, ma'am. It um, I, it will know the effects. It will know the sensation effects to the people. It will not change what I'm doing to them if I healing or taking or fixing something. It won't change that. It'll only change uh, their sensitivity to what's going on. But I have seen where I thought it would knock it out to where it amplified it. Don't know why. Yes, ma'am? I'm not, I'm just not familiar. I'm, I never did read much, and being that I'm in the country, I was isolated from the rest of the world, so I didn't, I didn't even know what the term metaphysical was until after I was up there working with Dr. Levingood. You know, where I come from, the term metaphysical will get you strung up and, you know, it's very strong Bible Belt where I'm at. The ancient Chinese were doing this. Mm -hmm. This has been around since man's been on this planet. Yeah. Yes, sir? Let's see if I've got that crystal with me. Something like that. Yeah, the quartz or anaphyst is very interesting. When I do my energy coming out my hands, it's like coming out like a floodlight, you know, kind of a wide angle. 
When I grab a piece of quartz and I send the energy through it to work on someone, it breaks my energy down to like a laser beam. So I've nearly got like a laser. Hold your, hold your hand up here, one of you, like that. All right. Now I'm going to aim like a laser beam around. Feel it cut your hand as I go through? Or not cut, but as it... Like a, like a cold energy. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Like that? Ah. I will sometime, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just, I love, if someone has a bee sting, snake bite, something with poison, I can take this, say if it got a little, like right there, if it got stung or so, I can take it and then just go round and round it a few times right there and it neutralizes the poison. You know? for, for those of you that don't know electronics, I've, I've got a degree in electronic engineering. Um, with the crystals, they, the, they literally were the first radios. They are able to pull mm -hmm. in the energy out of the air, and that's how we, we had our first radios. And then with our first lasers, yeah. and, um, the rubies concentrate the energy beams mm -hmm. to make the super hot defined laser beams. Yes. Yes. And concentrated. Yeah. You know, it brings it, it fine tunes it. In fact, different crystals would tune it up different ways. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the cut of the crystal would mm -hmm. also change your energy pattern. I'm sure it would. Yeah, I mean, I just found this out in kind of in the backwoods where I roam around at. Yes, sir. Um, did, did, you, did you ever find that there's like an emotional or psychological component to it, or does it affect the feelings? I can give you just a little example to that. Uh, motions do play a little bit of a part in it. I was sitting at my favorite little uh, Italian restaurant that I sit at, at the bar, and um, there was this pretty young thing come in, and I was sitting there talking with her, and um, here's this old redneck over yonder. It's always hitting up on all the new girls that come into town. He comes over and sits down on the other side of her. That upset me. And I didn't want him coming over there trying to take away what I was trying to do there. And I looked at him, and he turned just as red as an apple. And I started getting ill. And when I started getting ill, he, uh, yeah, I got to go. <laughs> so emotion there played a little part in it. Yes, ma'am. I do not like, um, I don't like using the cell phones for transmitting and holding it near because I'll start getting a little headache if I get any closer than this with my cell phone. When I do my long range healings and stuff, I prefer a baseline using speaker phone or a headset or so. The cell phones, uh, I'm not too keen on. I was practicing this and working with it, so cell phones Yes, I believe they do a little bit. And I don't remember, I don't know the final prognosis on our friend Dr. Bowman, but didn't a cell phone cause a lot of his problems, Bill? Possibly. Possibly. I mean, I keep seeing more and more research than stuff that would suggest it. Yes, ma'am? I'm not sure if I understand that quite right. Let me see. Have you found any limitations over the years treating different people with different illness or pain? Uh, a little bit. If they do drink a lot and stuff, uh, where it's breaking down their systems, what I do to help doesn't seem to last as long especially if they've got a liver problem or something. If you can't get them to stop doing what it is that's causing the problem or the damage, then, you know, all the healing in the world ain't ever going to save them like that. You've got to get people's mentality to straighten out about the what, what they're putting in their bodies. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, sir? Uh, people who've had a fracture, you know, a broken bone. Mm-hmm. 
Big time. Freaks doctors out after I work with them. If you got a fracture or a break, say arm or whatever, you go to the doctor and let him get it set, put in place right, then come find me. I'll put a charge through there that then go back an x-ray two days later and not find the break. It'll fuse the bone right back together in hours. The pain of that broken bone will go away like that. Yes, ma'am. I've got several people that are alive today that were supposed to have been dead years ago from cancer. And I've knocked it into total remission. I mean, a couple of them were given two weeks to live. And uh, they come to my shop every year just thank me and thank me. Yes? Very good at removing chronic headaches. In most cases. Can be uh, migraine or sinus. Uh, like I say, this energy is great for reduction in swelling. Most of the times your headaches is because of a swelling. And just in 15, 20 seconds of running the energy lightly across and around, the swelling goes away and the headache goes away. If it's a sinus related, I can expand the energy and push it in and out through the sinus cavities, basically changing the polarity and the sinus cavities will expand and contract, expand and contract, and they'll just clear whatever's in there. Okay. Yes, ma'am? If someone has, like, metal plates because of accidents, mm -hmm. what would this do for them? A lot of them can feel those metals and screws when I turn the energy on. They become very aware of them. But it's not in a painful way. Um, I had a friend of mine that had been in a bad car wreck when she was, like, 15 or something and had metal all the way up and down her, uh, the old-fashioned metal. When I did the energy around her, it made the metal get hot in her. But all the newer stuff, now she, her surgeries were like 25 years, I think, ago, she said. And uh, they used older, different type of metal then. And any time I'd do the energy, it'd make her vibrate in her and, and, or it'd get real hot, nearly burning. I think it was just something to do with the, the type of metal that they had used in them. I'd run it. Uh, it didn't cause pain pain because what I did made the pain that she had go down. It just made the metal get hot. But maybe the heating of the metal also helped reduction in the pain in there. Yes, ma'am? You talked a little bit about and, and it sort of alluded to um, kind of what you imagine or focus on. Just how we talked about sinuses, for instance. Okay. Are you, in fact, doing that along with your attention? Basically, I'm using the left and right side of my brain to make an energy ball in there jump back and forth at about three and a half times a second. If you can imagine that you were sitting on a stool, like a bar stool, and you're inside of a basketball coliseum, you know, knowing, or the football stadium, knowing how big it is. And all the lights are turned out and it's black dark. Then you start out over here on the left side and you got something that like, looks like the full moon, a white ball. And in your mind, you make that ball jump over here to the right side and you make it jump back to the left side. Then you get going and you start doing it back and forth. Once you get it up to about three times a second, then you start producing this energy. That's how I explain it and that seems to help people get started with it. Um, my brother, which is part of this little video here, has the energy, but he never played with it during his life, so he has no control over it, but yet the equipment showed it an increased level over normal people. So you were very young when your grandmother started working with you. Yes. How much, I'm a fly person, so I apologize. How much is faith, how much is belief, and how much is genetic? Genetics probably a good bit. Faith, I'm just an old something or another. Um, more genetics, I guess. And then the uh, the thing was that I never got taught. I mean, I've had people tell me you're imagining stuff. I look up at them. Oh, you're full of it. I know what I'm feeling. You know. So nobody ever convinced me that I was not doing anything. 
I believe my grandmother because she reinforced it. Uh, she always said, this is the Holy Spirit working through us. This is the Holy Spirit energy. And then that's the way I learned it, basically. Except I'm just not religious type person. No, I believe it's just in you know, universal energy. I know there's energy out there, and I just lock on to it. And it A little bit, a little bit. I get to help with a buddy of mine up in my hometown. He's the probation officer there, and we get kids in, troubled kids at times, and I'll take the kids, turn this energy on, and it's just like turns them around. Gives them a whole new idea of things to be thinking about instead of getting out and being in trouble. Mm, well, I can meditate like that and be done with it. Yeah, I'll, uh, I do. Uh, a form of technical remote viewing and it's also I guess an astral projection in the same sense I can travel around look at things examine things uh, one of the doctors that worked with uh, Dr. Levingood uh, Dr. John Giddy he was the founder of the fibromyalgia research and a neurophysiologist of the University of London we used to do a lot of experiments where he would send code numbers to me and I'd write reports on it you know, so that was in what he called the technical remote viewing. So do you think that, um, for example, Tibetan monks that meditate mm -hmm. and uh, they are able to raise their body temperature? Mm -hmm. So do you think that that's the same type of energy? It's the same energy, yes, but uh, for some reason they think it takes meditating to bring it up, and yet when they hook them to the equipment, They'll run it for an hour or so, and they'll slowly bring it up while they're meditating. But when I get a hold of it, I'll bring it up there wide open just like that for some reason. You know, and it's like I know how to meditate in a fraction of a second. That's incredible because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of discipline to, be mm -hmm. able to get to that. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've just played with this ever since I was a baby. I did, I mean, nonstop. I play with it every day. When I drove up here, I was playing with the people driving slow in front of me. <laughs> I can make them go faster. All you got to do is lock on the right foot there and put a little extra pressure in it there, and they, they don't even know they're going faster. No? Yeah, I guess I could. Let's see here. I was a problem birth. I would have had an older sister, and the hospital screwed something up at birth, and she died at birth. And when I came along, my parents, they took me out of Clayton, my little hometown. We went down to an Air Force base, Columbus, Georgia, and I was born there. Stayed there two weeks because they had a good medical center. Then took me back to the country, and then my grandma, because I had problems or whatever, just constantly worked with me. Okay, so, but I was exposed to it then very much at a young age. You know, let's see here. Play that up. hands down slowly and touch, just barely touch the top of the coil, will you? I'm just playing with it. Tell me when you touch them. Uh, just barely. Every time I can Okay. The coils there had 80,000 turns. They were super sensitive what, what and they were connected. This spike is oh, here. 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 Yeah. Uh -huh. When you touch it, you discharge. I discharge from it. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Uh, please don't do it yet until I'm ready. Uh, and uh, what I'm seeing here are some. Look at that peak when you first started. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's how I started controlling out here. Now, you didn't touch it here, did you? No, I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it. I would watch. To the right was normal people. That was started, me the very first time on the equipment. That's what he's going to do next. Oh. He's going to let himself go this next time. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, just let it kind of just... Yeah, oh, right. just, just I'll try to hold a pattern. I'll just smoke it. it. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the coil is creating the ions that produce the magnetic field. Okay? So it's... I, I, I can say anything about that. Can anybody? Big Sam Allen did it the first time. It's like holding magnets together in my hand. No question. 